Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my first impressions reaction to Requiem of a Rose King. Is it a Rose King or the Rose King? I have the Rose King listed, okay. At least in the file I have. <laughs> um, so this is a uh, first impressions, obviously. Um, and this is an interesting one, because I have no idea what the show is about at all. Based off the title, I can maybe make a guess or two. Um, but this is a series I know literally nothing about. Like, I've heard nothing about it. I didn't even know it existed until my friend posted about it on Twitter because my friend is in it, in the dub specifically. So, yeah, obviously we're reacting to the dub here. Uh, my friend Kieran is uh, one of the voice actors in it. I don't know who his character is, though. I don't know who he plays. I don't know um, even when his character appears. So he might not even be in episode one, for all I know. Um, and, and like I said, I don't actually know anything about this series. I don't know what the plot is. I don't know what it looks like, even. I know nothing. <laughs> um... Which is really interesting going into this, because usually with a lot of these first impressions, it's usually a series I haven't heard of or am somewhat excited for or whatnot, or it's a series that is getting a lot of attention. And I wouldn't really consider this any of that. It's not a series that I had heard of, again, outside of hearing my friend talk about it, outside of hearing Kieran mention it on Twitter. I've heard no one else mention it. So I... I I guess I, in that way, maybe it's just not that big of a series comparative to other stuff. I, I think it's recent, like within the, I don't know if it's this season or last season. I think it might be last season, but still recent. Um, and again, I haven't heard people talking about it. This isn't blowing up like other shows like Spy Family and My Dress Up Darling. Those were blowing up everywhere. Everyone was talking about those. But this one, I I haven't heard anyone mention it other than Kieran. So it's it's a really interesting one that I am honestly purely doing, uh, putting on here because of wanting to support Kieran, wanting to check out this uh, series that he's in that he seemed pretty proud of that he's pretty excited about. So. I want to give it a chance. I want to check it out. Um, I don't know what to expect with it. Uh, like I said, based off the title, I can make maybe a few assumptions. Um, a title like Requiem of the Rose King very much makes it feel like it's going to be maybe medieval fantasy. That's the kind of vibes I get from that. Um, on top of that, it kind of, uh, it kind of has like this very fanciful vibe to the language used for the title like requiem for the rose king i mean think of that that sounds very fanciful so it's like i'm just wondering like what the tone of this series is going to be i i i'm not sure but like i said i'm willing to check it out um like i said i don't know if Kieran's character does appear in the first episode or not if if they do I hopefully will recognize his voice <laughs> I mean I can't say that for sure um because I don't know if he's putting on some kind of voice or accent for the character because I I don't know but I'm very much so uh, willing to check this out and it just sounded like something you know why not it sounded like something interesting I could do for a first impressions. Um, so, since I don't know anything, there's not really much to talk about in these pre-thoughts. There's not really a lot to go off of. We'll just get this started, hope for the best. 
So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my after thoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So I, I looked up the bare minimal stuff of this. I, I didn't want to get spoiled or anything, but I, I want to look up like the the basic idea, the basic synopsis, and just get like a little more actual information on things. First off, I also did look up some of the voices. Um, Richard is Kieran, or Kieran is Richard. Um, that that much is like I, I did recognize that and it was j michael tatum as his father um and i was correct about the intersex part um i, I feel like the language that was used and, and everything in this was pretty notable um and, and i feel like it definitely implied that and this isn't actually the first intersex character that kieran has voiced um so there's kind of that connection too um and i would suggest uh definitely checking out uh god my mind is completely blanking um astra lost in space astra lost in space is a pretty pretty damn good series um and in it, Kieran voices a character named Luca Esposito, who is intersex. Um, so yeah, I would definitely suggest checking that out. It's a pretty good series if you haven't seen it. Um, but let's talk about this. So this is based on a Shakespearean story, but it's also based on a real life event um, or series of events or war um it's based off of the war of the roses which was a real life series of wars uh during the 1400s um it is something that i have briefly learned about in school but never like really went into it's it's one of those things that for some reason schools only briefly touched on there were a few of those things where it's like they never went into detail for some reason but it's like oh you you should know that this happened it's like okay <laughs> and i i guess i never really looked into it too much more um but it's also based off of uh henry the sixth uh part three um the shakespeare play as well as richard the third um so yeah and this is considered a shoujo, which is really interesting because this is not what I would think of when I think of a shoujo series. Um, but apparently it is. So I didn't look up everything. Again, I didn't want to get spoiled. Um... But I'm getting some very gay vibes from this. Um, I'm, I'm just saying, like, this this feels very fucking gay. <laughs> um, th I, I feel like this is probably a, a, a queer story. A, a, well, a queer interpretation of the story. Um, there are cases of those here and there. And... I think that the idea is that Richard and Henry are probably going to end up together. I think there's a bit of evidence in this for that. Um, but as for the actual events of this episode, so we have the two factions. One side rules the kingdom while the other side technically has the right to the throne. Um, 
Richard's side, I'll just say them as Richard's side and uh, Henry's side for now, because the, the the names and titles and everything are going to, would, would take a, get, a bit getting used to. Um, Richard's side and his father's side are the true, uh, the true royals, basically. They're, they're the ones who, uh, are supposed to be on the throne, but it was usurped by Henry's side. And so the first episode basically uh, it showcases this campaign, this battle to win it back. And they win, but they decide not to kill Henry in the end, instead to try and have their reign officially recognized without having to go that far um but this this episode definitely was more about our main character richard richard is an intersex man who carries his father's name he is a prince and he holds his father's legacy within his name which for a royal family is a big deal. Like, obviously you understand that, that that carrying the name means a lot. So, he is beloved by his father. His father sees him as just kind of his favorite son, let's be honest. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> but, Richard himself is extremely self-loathing and not not because of his own reasons necessarily but because of how others view him most notably his mother his mother hates him like vitriolically hates him she sees him as a demon as someone who because of the way he was born because of being intersex is cursed and is under demonic control and spreading that to his father, her husband. And unfortunately, shit like this is not an uncommon thing to see in reality. N even to this day, but especially back in the older ages and whatnot, like the 1400s or what, or throughout that period of history. <laughs> Um, for a long time, it's like a lot of people like this who are intersex and just who, honestly, a lot of people who just didn't fit the normal, uh, views of the world were oftentimes demonized. People who were autistic were called demons and said to be possessed. And it's horrible. People with mental disorders, because back in those days, they didn't know what mental disorders were. They just like, oh, this person must be possessed by a demon. And a lot of times it caused unjust and horrifying murder of these people. It caused them to be murdered, mutilated, just horrible shit happened to people like this who just weren't quote unquote normal and it's really fucked up and what we're seeing here is obviously a lighter version of that but still the the idea that his mother is this evil towards him <coughs> excuse me that it's even gotten him into believing it himself. He feels unworthy of his name. He feels unworthy of his family. He believes that he's not worthy of going to heaven because of who he is. And it's all because of what his mother has drilled into him. And 
yet he's also conflicted because he has this father who adores him and who treats him with absolute respect and love. And so I kind of think though that moment where we see like the Joan of Arc uh, character in there, I think that's more meant to be representative of his mental state. I, I don't think like there's an actual witch or anything there. I, I think it's like his inner demons taking form. And it's probably because of a bit of a fractured mind. He's stuck in between two extremes. The absolute adoration of his father and the absolute despisement of his mother. And to be facing those things probably on a daily basis, he's he's got to be having some emotional and mental troubles. Like, I know I would be. <laughs> like, he's probably just not okay <laughs> at all. So it's really... It's really sad. And you really do feel for his character. It's like... Like, a lot of this... Uh, people could say, yeah, there's a little bit of a pity party going on. It's it's very much him having that kind of attitude. But at the same time, it's like you see what's going on. You see how messed up his mind's got to be from all this. You can't necessarily blame him. Like, you kind of see where he's coming from. And it's just, to me, it's just sad. It's really sad. It's really... I, I really feel for him. And then we have some other characters introduced, like this girl. She wanted to save this boar, and so Richard agrees to do so. He ends up saving the boar, and then he finds out later that she's uh, she's the daughter of a uh, higher up in his in his father's court, something like that. Um, and so she's gonna be important. We see his brothers, um, and they seem nice. It, it mostly seems to just be his mom, from what we can see so far. Uh, we also see a prince on Henry's side, and it's just, there's an interesting amount of dynamics that are going on, and I'm definitely interested to see how they go. Now, here is the question. Will I be reacting to this series going forward? Or do I think this would be better on my own time? So, looking at the anime here, uh, there are 16 episodes currently released, but it is still going. Meaning it's probably going to have around 24 episodes. 24, 26, somewhere in that range. Uh, this did start in January, uh, so it, it was last season. It was the winter season of anime. Um, but yeah, it's because it's uh, the length it's at that it's still going. Um, so that's interesting in and of itself. Now, I, I'm going to say right off the bat that my impressions of this first episode, I'm interested. But I'm not, like, invested as of yet. I'm interested. I, I definitely care for the main character. And I, I, I'm, definitely, I, I'm definitely interested in the queer uh, stuff that this series is giving to us. But I'm not 100% invested yet. And I think that does affect whether or not 
I'm going to enjoy this. Now, it doesn't necessarily prove one way or the other, um, for sure. But I do take first impressions kind of seriously. And if I enjoy something, I'm going to acknowledge that. If I don't enjoy something, I'm going to acknowledge that. And that will affect, especially for first impressions, whether or not I continue. I did enjoy this. Like I said, it made me interested, but not invested. I think we'll give it a trial period. What this means um, is that we're going to we are going to react to more not right away we'll get to it uh when a space opens up and when i can get to it basically um because obviously i have other stuff to get to first but um i will give it a trial period and we'll see how it goes um i feel like i need to see more episodes before i can truly say if this is going to be something that will even be great for reactions in the first place so we'll see how it goes i'm not going to put it to any specific amount of episodes right now i'm just going to say we're going to give it a trial once we do come back to it and i'm going to give it a chance we're going to react to more but if i ever feel like i'm just not enjoying reacting to it or whatnot then we can stop at that point or if I feel like it's just not my kind of show or whatnot. Although it seems like it probably could be. Um, I, I, I'm definitely going to give it a chance here. So yeah, it, it's not like a full... It's not like with uh, My Dress Up Darling or Spy Family where it's like, oh yeah, I definitely am going to react to more of this. It's more like... I'm going to check out more of this. I'm going to react to more of this in the future, but I'm not as invested as with other stuff I've done a first impressions for. That's kind of my view on it. Um, and that might change. Episode two, episode three uh, might change my mind. That's fully possible. But we'll see. We will see. So yeah, I'll get back to this at some point in the future. I don't know exactly when. Um, just whenever I can get to it, basically. Because I can't react to everything at once. Um, that's the point of these first impressions, to find possible stuff for the future. <laughs> um, but tell me in the comments below what you thought of this uh, first episode of Requiem of the Rose King. And tell me what you thought of the dub voicing, too. Um, there's a few dub voices in here that I recognize. Ian Sinclair is in here. J. Michael Tatum. Obviously, Kieran, him being my friend and everything. Um, being kind of the reason I decided to check this out. Um, I'm definitely interested to see what more this series can do. And even if I don't end up reacting to it for too long... I might just end up watching it on my own time anyway. We'll see. Either way, we will give it a chance. We will continue to check it out in the future. But for now, thank you all so much for tuning in. I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See you all next time.